Previously on Gus the Struggle Boys. So now the next thing that we do is we take this tape and we put it along the seams. Hold up. The tape goes first and then you patch it on top of that to help bond it together and seal the whole crack. And this is specific for cement board self-adhesing tape. Okay, so we have our hardy wood up and like you saw we're gonna start putting this tape up um, Some of it's not really sticking which is interesting because it says aggressively sticky so what we might have to do is uh, Put some thin set down first then the tape and then another layer Just so it gets a really good seal fill all those cracks and that the tape um, Really sticks to where it's supposed to The only thing is that that thin set dries really really quickly. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and cut the pieces of tape for all these cracks so that they'll already be cut and measured to where they need to go. Hopefully they'll at least stay like these did where they need to be. And so then if I need to take it off of the thin set, I already have that piece cut and I can just get it all done really quickly. on two separate tracks, each one giving special emphasis to certain sections of the orchestra, as heard from those positions. Now, when played back simultaneously on two separate systems, the sounds are blended together to achieve a new dimension in sound, impossible to obtain in a monolo recording. So it looks a little bit messy, and there's some tape falling down, but I'll fix that with the thin set like we talked about. The video that we watched with the guy using the exact same stuff, who is like professional and has his own channel we can link it below but uh he was really helpful but he didn't do any tape or thin set over the screws but i'm gonna go ahead and do that anyway just just to you know really make sure everything's waterproof i mean it should be okay but i'm just gonna do that anyway um make me feel better this area is gonna get a little bit interesting we're not quite sure what we're gonna do out here or up here but right now we're just gonna focus on where the actual hardy board is it along the window seals got all my cracks covered up okay so the last thing that we're gonna do is I'm gonna clean off the shower pan because one thing that doesn't help is when the when everything's all dusty the tape won't stick at all so I'm gonna clean up uh, all this dust and everything that came down from the screws but if you can see the shower pan has this lip around the edge and the next thing we're supposed to do is put the tape on this edge going down to the bottom of the shower pan. 
so then the tile will go all the way down and meet the shower pan and then you work you will caulk this edge um, with a specific type of caulking we'll get there when we get there but right now I'm gonna clean this off and do that if you can see what we did is because this shower pan has a lip here here and here it does not have one on this side because that's where the entrance is supposed to be so down here there is no lip so we put the hardy board all the way down and we'll really caulk down in there really well and seal it and then the uh the waterproofing membrane and the tile will go all the way down and then seal that crack so on the opposite side behind the board right here we'll do the exact same thing this will probably just get waterproofing membrane because our shower curtain will be mounted probably here and here and it will just uh, block all this other area out and so we are just waterproofing the area where the actual shower will be everything else will get the uh, waterproofing membrane that we'll show you here in a second but this is the beautiful tape job now on to the thin set part so this is the thin set we're going to be using it's flex bond thin set mortar and this brand is supposed to be a really good brand but the flex bond specifically is good for this type of option so it's just supposed to be a little bit more flexible in the joints when you're in a moving vehicle so this is going to be a little bit stressful because I'm doing it by myself, but you basically put the put a little bit of water in first, then you put some powder in and you mix it for about five to ten minutes until you get a peanut butter type texture. And then it's supposed to set within uh, 15 to 20 minutes. So we have to move quickly and uh, first time doing anything like this ever. Moving quickly is not really something you wanna add on to it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do it in small batches, a little bit at a time, so it doesn't dry too fast while we figure out what we're doing. Okay, let's go. I'm procrastinating. Go! Five seconds was probably four four hours or something for me so it wasn't as hard as I thought but it was you know very tedious trying to get it as flat as possible I did the best I could um, I had a couple different sized trowels like you saw just to get different corners and stuff and then just slopping it on and then trying to get it as flat as possible uh, the last thing that I had to do was go around the edge like you saw and try to get it in all those cracks. Now I'm going to take these paper towels and water and just get it off anywhere on the shower pan that it did get just to make sure it's nice and clean and doesn't dry on there. Then this stuff will sit. It dries pretty quickly, but I'm going to let it sit for a little bit, maybe an hour or so. And then I can do a couple coats of the Red Guard, which is the waterproofing membrane. And that 
with the thin set and everything will make it super super waterproof at least i'm hoping so so i'm gonna stop complaining and show you what i did So as you can see, Meredith did an amazing job putting on the thin set on the actual hardy bagger. What I'm going to do now, there's one section we weren't really sure exactly how to do, um, which is this bottom area right here. This bottom area in the front does not have a lip like the back and the other two sides do. So it didn't have that seamless kind of just drop down. So I'm going to work on basically just putting some tape over here, having it overlap the actual uh, shower pan a little bit just enough so it can be covered up by any tile that we do decide to put on here but that's what I'm going to be doing right now and then after that we get to put some red card on here you see stereophonic sound for the home is recorded on two separate tracks each one giving special emphasis to certain sections of the orchestra, as heard from those positions. Now, when played back simultaneously on two separate systems, the sounds are blended together to achieve a new dimension in sound, impossible to obtain in a monoro recording. drama in these. We don't need any drama. <laughs> Stop talking about drama. We need to show the drama to the camera. <laughs> Apparently that makes videos do better. Where? You know where I learned to paint? Where? Where did you learn to paint? I trained in the mountains with this whole guy. <laughs> yeah, see? So I'm just <laughs> Come on, why do you have to ruin everything? on two separate tracks, each one giving special emphasis to certain sections of the orchestra, as heard from those positions. Now, when played back simultaneously on two separate systems, the sounds are blended together to achieve a new dimension in sound, impossible to obtain in a monoro recording. So I just finished painting that red guard. 
I ended up doing it all with the bristle brush, which was a little bit more work, but I had a foam roller and it didn't really get into those cracks. And so it took like a really long time just to do one little section with that little foam roller. If you have a normal roller, like the one that has that like fuzzy stuff on it, probably would be easier. And the brush I started using to get all the corners and everything. I have seen people just put the red guard on the seams because that's where it needs to be even more protected. But just to be safe and everything, we did it on the whole thing. And just for your own information, uh, that little can of red guard, we didn't get the giant one, we got the smaller one. I did about three coats on the whole shower and probably four or five coats on all the seams uh, with that little can and we still have leftover. And this is our little 30 by 60 shower. It does have two windows and then this little door section missing, but it was plenty. You'd have plenty to do a full shower. But this is what it looks like afterwards with all of the coats on it and everything. We're gonna let it dry. And then from there, I mean, we pretty much just need to pick out what we're gonna do next, whether it be tile or something like that. And then after we get all the tile and everything on there, we will caulk all the seams like along the ceiling and you know where the tile ends and anywhere else, as well as cover up the rest of this wood with a uh, moisture sealant, just a regular one. How we haven't decided what we're gonna do with the rest of the bathroom yet. But this is our shower. And the next thing you'll see as far as this is maybe putting in tile, who knows? We'll see. We already have our shower head and our handle and everything. So we will just need to decide what we're gonna do and then pick one out and go for it. <laughs>